Hi guys, and welcome back to another episode of Let's Play Tales of Brazil. It's last time we did a galaxy to check an elf pod's point. Now, let's continue and do some dialogue. Hmm. What else do they have in common? What are you up to? I'm compiling everything we know about Earth pulse points, starting with what the ones in Ward Forest and Polymedes have in common. I'll compare those points with the ones that didn't have any Therians. Then, I'll factor in everything I currently know about the Abbey's deployments. Once that's done, I'll match all that information against what we know about the locations Lafayette was able to sense. When that's completed, we should be able to tell which locations are more likely to house a Therian. You're really going all out, aren't you? Must you sound so incredulous? If you're going to do something, then give it your all! There is no other way to live! R right I'm counting on you then. I'm not doing this for you. This is for me and for Lafayette. Do you even understand why that boy's trying so hard? Yeah, I do. Okay. Lafayette! I spy! I spy! Uh, I can't, Kamawana. I I've got stuff. I spy with my little eye! Something that starts with V! <sighs> Okay, I'll, uh, is it Velvet? <laughs> Wait, Kamawana, I'm sorry. You <laughs> poor fee. Okay. Have you been practicing your dove impression, Velvet? What? No. Now, now, a performer in Mogilu's menagerie ha- What if we're stopped at a checkpoint and the guards ask you to perform a trick? If that happens, I'll show them my trick where I devour an entire witch faster than the blink of an eye. Oh, that would be a sight indeed. But seriously, if you ever want some magic tricks up your sleeve, let me know and I'll teach you some. Just 10,000 gold each. Okay. Oh, hey, Velvet. You don't mind if I give Kudogane that orichalcum you fished up, do you? Doesn't matter to me. But do you really think he can make a weapon with that? Well, I don't know. What does the expert think? Conventionally, no, it's impossible. But when has convention ever stopped a demon? I won't argue that. We're dealing with the hardest metal in existence. But I'm ready to cast aside all doubt. To focus everything on forging my greatest creation. If anybody can do it, it's you. Good luck, Kurogane. Yeah, best of luck. If you can make Rokuro stronger, you'll be helping me out too. Okay. Equipment. Let's see what this is about. Hey, what do you say we track down another Therian? Sure. From what I can tell, the next closest Earth Pulse Point is near the center of Midgand. Midgand, huh? The capital's not far from there. I wonder how things are now that Griffin's gone, though. Only one way to find out. Maybe so, but Aizen's not here, you know. You're right. I haven't seen him in a while. We should probably ask Benwick where he wandered off to. Yeah. Hmm? Uh, hold on. There's a letter here. On pretty cutesy stationery, too. Let's just have a quick look-see. As the cold turns bitter and the snow piles up on the mountains, I cannot help but think of you and hope you are in good cheer. As for myself, I am the same as ever, although I recently acquired a rare item that I shall be sending your... It's rude to read other people's letters, you know. Yeah, but how else are we supposed to find out whose it is? Does it say who the sender is? Uh... Uzfamewu Wexev. Who the hell is that? Probably someone on this island, if I had to guess. Hey! Anybody lose a letter? Do any of these folks look like the type to write a fancy letter? Point taken. 
It could be one of the pirates. Why don't we go to the docks and ask around? Fine, just don't forget our mission. Okay. Let's see. One X three glasses works for my eye. Okay. Let's take out. No reply this time either. Eh, but she's doing okay. I can say that much. That's good to hear. I can rest easy then. Now's about getting that pot wrapped. I've got this new sunflower print, huh? How's that sound? Hmm. Yeah, that one's cute enough. Let's go with that. Did... Did he just say cute? <clears throat> Help you with something? Someone dropped this letter. Do you have any idea who it might... You didn't read it, did you? Wait, it's yours? We didn't read it. Much. You really didn't read it? N no of course not. Put this letter in with the package. Who's got it? When you ship with the Turtles Express, rest assured your mail is in good hands. If you're done here, we're ready to head out. Our destination is Midgand. Yeah, I'm all set. Was he sending a gift to someone? And with a letter, too. Gotta be a lady friend, that's for sure. You think? Either way, that letter was really polite. And did you see that penmanship? Yeah, I didn't know old Reaps had it in him. I can hear you two, you know. Ah. Okay. Yikes! Better watch what we say from now on. Yeah. Uh, yeah, only eight minutes sing. This is gig time. I noticed you've come up with your little name for the kid. You sure are the sentimental type, aren't you? Oh? Calling him Fee doesn't cost me anything. And it's not like I gave it much thought. That may be the case, but no one else has taken even that token effort. And in doing so, I wonder if maybe you were trying to encourage him to be his own being. After all, one requires a name before he can consider his own identity. Having been given a name, he realizes he is his own entity, separate from others, and a certain formless essence comes to life inside him. And you're the one who set that process in motion for the kid. Whether you intended to or not, you changed him from a puppet into a living being. So what's your point? I've been with you since the start of this journey, haven't I? Wouldn't kill you to give me a nickname, would it? I've never really thought of us as being that close. And besides, you just forced your way into the group. Come now! I know you've got a bigger heart than that! Surely you have it in you to- We're not dear friends. And even if we were, I'm not good at nicknames anyway. Please, I- Okay then. Moggy. Oh, come on, that's so obvious! Fine. Do I look like an old man to you? Okay then. Witchy Mick Witcherton. Interesting. Well, if I had to rank it against 1,000 other nicknames, I'd probably put it at number 1,011. Okay. A nickname needs to have charm. It. Sure then. Hattie. Now you're just saying what you <laughs> see! Book skirt. That's not any better either! <laughs> Ms. Creepy Eyes. That's 
just an insult. Look, no nicknames based on what you see, and especially no slandering. Little Miss Witch who smiles around you but stabs you in the back when you're not looking. Hey, that's personal information! <laughs> Look, I told you. I'm not good at coming up with nicknames. Forget it! I should have known this wouldn't work! <laughs> okay. Aizen, what happened to those octopuses? Dial and Kurogane took them to the kitchen. They said they were going to make dinner for Kamoana. They're going to feed demons to her? Atheria needs malevolence to survive. That's why they carried them off alive. What do they plan on making? Octopus ink pasta with takoyaki and fried octopus on the side, and Helovician octopus carpaccio. Do they have a takoyaki pan here at the prison? Kurogane hammered one out with some iron, along with a large pot for the pasta. <laughs> Still looking like that? Takoyaki would hit the spot right about now, though. Octopus ink pasta, huh? Like squids, octopuses release ink as a defensive mechanism. But theirs is made of different stuff and is used in other ways. Squid ink is stickier and acts like a decoy. But octopus ink spreads out like a cloud of smoke. But squid ink has 30 times the savory flavor. So octopus ink isn't used in pasta all that often. Laffy told me the same thing. He said that's why octopus ink pasta isn't very good. Laffy said that? Yeah, so I ended up not making it for him. But I wonder... I guess it doesn't matter, since I can't taste it now. I'll taste it for you then. So make me some octopus ink pasta sometime, all right? All right. And I'll be sure to make some that doesn't come from demons. Okay. Manu skates. Hey, who did Eisen send that letter and cooking pot to anyway? I don't want to think about it. That walloping still stings. You've got to be curious though, right? Maybe. It was serious stuff. Whoever it is must be important to him. A lover, maybe? Aizen's lover? A child wouldn't be happy with that cooking pot, and a man wouldn't want it wrapped up so pretty. A young woman with Aizen's tastes, then. He'd be bound to fall for a miraculous match like that. I don't know. I bet she's that girl with the yellow umbrella. You really have a thing for her, don't I do not- Then pray tell. What do you mean? Huh? Eavesdropping, Eleanor? How unseemingly rude of you. Besides, Luffy said is free to like whoever- You're one to talk about eavesdropping, Moggy Lou. Anyway, it's just that the sunflower design on the wrapping reminded me of her. Now that you mention it, but does it really matter? He has someone to write to in any case. True. I can't help but feel a bit envious. What a nice way of summing it up, Velvet. So you were eavesdropping too, then. Uh. Okay. Say, what do you think about Aizen? Oh, so that's the kind of guy you're into, hmm? <laughs> huh. Not what I'd expect, but... No! I just feel there's something different about him. The way he picks presents, the objects that catch his eye. Oh, is that all? Boring. No kidding. All men have some kind of particular interest, big or small. I suppose that's true, but he seems a bit... shall we say, overly obsessive? Now that you mention it, he does have a tendency to ramble on about various topics. And it's not just the items he collects. There's more to it? Every weekend, he eats curry for dinner, and every time we go into port, he docks at the third ballard. Come to think of it, I heard the galley crew complaining that he always needs his pasta cooked exactly the right way. And when he needs a new outfit, he always goes to the same tailor and returns with identical clothes and boots. 
It all has to be exactly the same size and in exactly the same color. Turtle says he's very nitpicky. Sounds like he's not so much picky as he is a pain in the ass. But I do see a different side of him now. I thought pirates were all rough and filthy, but it seems they can be quite meticulous. Not much of a reassessment. Okay. Okay. It must not feel great only ever getting tails, I bet. Nah, I don't really mind that much. It's way too late for me to start letting that bother me. Yeah, but wouldn't it be nice to get heads at least once? Hell, I know I'd like to see that, and I bet Laffy said here does too. Yeah, I do. Right? That's why I've brought something a little special. Ta-da! What's so special about that coin? It looks identical to the one Aizen already has. The front side does, yes. But both sides of the coin are actually heads. I had Kurogane make it for me custom. If both sides are heads, then not even the Reaper's curse can stop it. Well, yeah, but that's cheating. What's the point in getting heads if it's rigged that way? It's not cheating. It's called effort and hard work. How? If you always work hard and never give up, you'll make your own way forward. All right, I'm in. I'll get that heads for you. are attracted to shiny objects, I suppose. Damn it! I can't even win against a crow! <laughs> Don't sweat it! I figured something like this might happen, so I had a backup ready. Go on, give it a shot. You'll show that curse who's boss this time. <laughs> All right, here goes. I don't believe it! Now Prince Percival's griffin's gone and eaten the other coin right out of the air! Are you kidding me? <laughs> Not to worry. I've got a spare backup. It's time to put that curse on notice. <laughs> right. Here I go. You gotta be kidding me. Reaper's curse or not, does it really have to go this far over a damn coin? It's fine, really. I had a feeling it'd turn out like this. <laughs> well, I sure didn't. Yeah, me neither. Okay. Holy on time. Uh, Nike Minix. A big action. Stop it here. This is it for this episode of Let's Play Tales of Persia. See you guys next time. Savvy Silver 2 out.